not my name is possible and I will be your tutor for today all right in our previous lecture we were looking at how to use economic models to support economic theory we said that economic theory is the written aspect of the economics and then the model is the diagrammatical representation of a theory or it is a tabular representation of a theory or mathematical representation of a theory so economic model is a tabular diagrammatical or a mathematical representation of a theory and when we talk about a tabular representation we are talking about a shadow using a shadow and then when we talk about um, a diagrammatical we are talking about the usage of what a curve the usage of a curve and then when we talk about mathematical we are talking about using our functions or formulas i hope it makes sense so in our previous lectures we look at the table which is the shadow and then from there we also look at um, the demand curve i hope it makes sense and we saw that the table and the curve all of them supported the assertion of the demand theory which is the law of demand uh, the law of demand i hope it makes sense so we are saying that in economics irrespective of the one that you use being theory or model the two of them must come together they should be in agreement in fact no should they must be in agreement so your model must agree with your theory i hope it makes sense and today is of no exception once you have done the shadow and you have done the curve today we are going to do the mathematical representation which is the last aspect or the last component of the model but trust me we are all what we are we have been doing we are focusing on um, we are focusing on the individual demand i hope it makes sense we have not started with market demand when you talk about individual demand we are talking about one consumer or a customer or it makes sense but if we talk about market demand we are talking about a group of consumers probably two or more i hope it makes sense nice one god bless you so we are going straight to the board and then from there we do our computations so we have seen that this is our demand curve right demand curve and the demand curve also supports the the law of demand which is the theory so we are saying that when the price is at, at the extreme consumers are not willing to patronize so they are willing to buy zero units when price comes down to eight Ghana cities consumers are willing to consume four units and then down to four Ghana cities consumers are willing to buy eight and then when the price is zero consumers are willing to consume 100 units yes indeed assuming um, assuming iphone 11 pro is 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 zero ghana cities look at the number of people who will be running after it i hope it makes sense nice one so we are saying that if the price is zero a lot of consumers will be consuming it i hope it makes sense nice one so looking at this one from our previous lecture we got to know that the demand curve is linear it's a line in nature i hope it makes sense it is a line in nature y equal to mx plus c don't be confused it's the same as c plus mx and it could also be written as c minus mx don't be confused whereby m is the gradient and then c is the y intercept i hope it makes sense now the law of demand also follows this formula because demand curve is line in nature i hope it makes sense so out of this one we got our demand function we got our demand function so our demand function could be written as q the quantity demanded equal to a minus b p but when you write it like this you are not done i hope it makes sense why am i saying that you are not done because we don't know whether the price is the price of this commodity right 
good. We don't know whether this price belongs to this commodity. So for us to know that this price belongs to this commodity, we have to put something here. It could be any variable. It could be Y, it could be M, it could be P, it could be T. I would make sense that I prefer X. If you write X here, you should write X here. If you write M here, you should write M here. Why am I saying that? This, this is because we are saying that this is the old price. This is the price of this commodity. The price of this commodity. So where X, let us assume that X is Richoku. 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 So if X is Richoku, we are saying that this price is the price of Richoku. Because it is X and here is X. So this means that here could also be something like this, BPY. And probably the Y will also be price of Milo. I hope it makes sense. The Y will be price of Milo. If here becomes Y, then it means that this is not the price of this. Why? Because here is X and here is Y. So probably this, this one might become the price of other related commodity. Other related commodity. Other commodity. I hope it makes sense. But this one, because here is X and here is X, it is the old price. But for the meantime, we are focusing on the old price of the commodity. I hope it makes sense. Now, once you have seen it like this, let us try to understand the formula. I have told you that the formula is going to chew and pour something. You should be able to understand it from the concept of the equation of a line. Because the equation of a line is written in this format. And out of the equation of a line, that we deduce the formula or equation of demand. I hope it makes sense. So that is how it is. Now we are going to look at each component in the equation of demand. I hope it makes sense. So we have QDX. And we are saying that that is the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. The oil, like the commodity itself, quantity demanded of the commodity. And then from there we look at A. A is what is called autonomous, autonomous demand. Autonomous demand. Now when we talk about autonomous demand, autonomous demand is the unit that will be consumed when price is equal to zero. Autonomous demand. That is the unit that will be consumed when price is equal to nil or zero. So when you get a work problem, which says that and when price is equal to zero, uh, consumers will, are willing or will be willing to purchase how many units of the commodity. Then you have to get to know that we are talking about autonomous demand. When price is equal to nil, consumers are willing to patronize every unit of the commodity. Then you have to know that we are talking about what? Autonomous demand. Let's put that one aside. Another form, because it is autonomous and it does not depend on price, because when price is equal to zero, it is that value is still there. So we are saying that it does not depend on price, it is independent. It is independent. Autonomous, the word autonomous itself even means that it is independent. How it makes sense? So we are saying that it does not depend on price. How it makes sense? Once it does not depend on price, listen to this one. Sometimes in word problem, this is how they are going to put it. In word problem. They are going to say that irrespective of the change, irrespective of the change in price, consumers are willing to consume 50 units of the commodity. So as soon as we hear something like that, irrespective of the change in price, it means that the value that will follow belongs to autonomous demand. I hope it makes sense. The value that will follow belongs to autonomous demand. Because autonomous demand does not depend on price. So irrespective of the change in price, consumers are willing to consume this. I hope it makes sense. 
So that, that is the autonomous demand. Put it at the back of your mind because you will definitely meet it. Thank you for that. The next component is the negative here. Hey, it's really, 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 really important. Very, very important. The negative symbol here is very important. So the negative, the negative, the negative. Now the negative over here, don't forget. In our previous lecture, I think lecture two or so, we said that there is an inverse relationship between quantity demanded and price. From the law of demand, which is the theory, it says that when price increases, quantity demanded comes down. And when price what decreases, quantity demanded also goes up. It means that there is an inverse relationship. There is a negative relationship. And that is the negative symbol here. So, from the assertion, from our previous lecture, from the theory, we could see that even the demand function or the mathematical expression also give reference to the law of demand, which is the theory. And that is why I told you that model must give respect to a theory. If your model is not giving respect to your theory, then your concept is wrong. So we could see that the negative here is talking about the negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So the negative here is an inverse relationship. Inverse relationship between quantity demanded and price. It is an inverse relationship. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. I like that. So that is the inverse relationship. Now the next component is the B. B. The B is like the M. It is the gradient or the slope. It is the gradient or the slope. So we are saying that it is the slope. It is the slope of the demand curve. I hope it makes sense. The slope of the demand curve. Which is the same as dy dx. Or sometimes dq dp. But I don't want to introduce you to that one for the meantime. Don't worry. It is the slope. Now when you talk about the slope, let me explain it to you because you get it in web program. When you talk about the slope, we are talking about the change that will occur in quantity demanded when price changes. Look at it carefully. We are saying that from the law of demand, the law of demand, we are saying that the law of demand, we are saying that the law of demand, we are saying that when price changes, quantity demand will also change. When price changes, quantity demand will also change. But the question is, by how many units is the, is the quantity going to change? And we are saying that the quantity is going to change by the slope. So the slope is what the change that will occur in quantity demand when price changes. The slope is the change that will occur in quantity demand when price changes. How it makes sense? Good. And the next one is price. PX. That's the own price of the commodity. The own, own, own price. The own, own, own price. Own, own price of the commodity. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So, once I'm concluding my lecture for today, let me read the interpretation of the whole formula onto you. Now, QD equal to A minus BP X. Every demand function, there must, there must be a negative symbol being attached to this component. Negative symbol attached to this. There must be a negative attached to BP for demand formula. Demand signifying an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. I hope it makes sense. Now this is the interpretation of the formula. Now look at it carefully. We are saying that when price increases by a Ghana CD, this is how we read it. We read the formula. When price increases by price increases by a 
MCD quantity demanded would decrease would decrease the minus here means decrease so when price increases by a Ghana one CD quantity demanded would decrease by B because the slope we have interpreted it we said that the slope is a quantity that will either increase or decrease when price changes how it makes sense so when price increases by Ghana city quantity demanded will decrease by B that is the interpretation so watch out for our next lecture please kindly subscribe to the channel so that you can get access to the videos that will be posted in our next lecture we are going to look at the market demand this one is for individual consumers now in our next lecture we are going to look at two or more consumers and then from there we move on once again my name is possible bye bye